All right, we already talked about the fact that the moon is tidally locked, and we only see the front side, this side, all the time. But the back side of the moon looks like that. They don't look the same. When astronomers, well, excuse me, when astronauts first started going around the moon, or we sent probes to the moon to go around and around, and we found out that the back side of the moon doesn't look anything like the front side of the moon, it was a huge and massive mystery. What actually is going on? Here's what we hypothesize, what scientists hypothesize. The front side of the moon, the crust is thinner. The crust, remember, is that outer layer of rock on the planet. And we think the front side of the moon, the crust is thinner, and it's easier for lava to push up through, creating the mare. So when a, a crater would impact, it would crack this crust, lava would flow up, and you'd get the seas created. The back side of the moon has lots and lots and lots of craters, but no mare. There are none to be seen. Okay, there's one. All right, so none maybe is a false statement, but very, very, very few. What gives? How come the backside doesn't have as many mare? Well, it is believed that it has to do with the fact that this is thicker. So how do you get a planet, or how do you get a moon that's one side is thicker than the other? There are a couple different hypotheses. I'll tell you one that has fallen out of favor because you will hear people talking about it. An old hypothesis is that there were once two moons. One moon, the one we know, and then a baby moon. And that the baby moon was moving microscopically faster than the big moon and that it ran into the backside of the moon and it created, it kind of wrapped itself around the current moon. Um, that two moons theory for planet Earth has sort of gone out of favor. In, instead, we believe what I'm about to tell you right now. We think that the moon has two different sides due to the way that it was tidally locked and the way the rocks cooled. So we think the tidal locking of the moon, meaning only one face was near the Earth, um, happened very quickly, within about 100 days or so. And uh, modelers and astronomers and mathematicians have done the math on that, and it works. And it seems to be true. Also, at that point in time, the moon was 10 to 20 times closer to the Earth than it was now. Now, the Earth at that point in time was a big, molten, hot mess. And this hot molten earth gave off or emitted lots and lots and lots of heat. We think the moon cooled off well before the earth did because it's a lot smaller. That's one of the reasons why mothers cut food into tiny pieces before they give it to children is to cool it off quickly. So that we think the moon was cool and the earth was this hot mess. So how does this explain the, the thick backside of the moon. What we think happened was this. The front side of the, the Earth was giving off lots and lots and lots and lots of heat. And I think I'm going to change my pen color to something that looks hot. There we go. The Earth was giving off lots and lots and lots of heat. The moon was only showing us its front side. The so the heat was hitting the front side of the moon, not hitting the back side of the moon. The front side of the moon was hot the back side of the moon was much colder. This heat that hit the front side of the moon caused some of the material, rock actually, that was on the moon to vaporize, turn into a gas, and because of the rotational motion of the moon, because remember it's still spinning, some of this material was flung off of it and then gravitationally got attracted back to the back side of the moon. So some material was lost off the front of the moon, and it ended up going to the backside where it was cold and it could cool down. This gave us a moon with a thick crust on the backside and a thin crust on the front side. Kind of sounds like a really cool pizza, half thin crust, half thick crust. So how did this vaporization process occurred? Um, 
if you ever have a lot of steam, maybe in the winter time when you're taking a shower, you steam up your bathroom and you notice that it's very, very cold outside, like below zero kind of cold, and the steam from your shower starts to ice up the windows in your bathroom. Same sort of thing. Things get hot. When they hit something that is cold, they turn back into a solid. This evolution of the moon video, I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, this actually, it has no voice, no audio, but it's, it's quite beautiful. It was produced by NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and it gives you an idea of how the moon went from being something molten into its current rocky condition. I'm going to finish up the last couple of slides here, and then I'll show you the last videos at the end. Um, I wish this course had enough time to go into the history of NASA's space program and the history of the entire space program. Unfortunately, we do not. But I'm going to ask you to watch two of these videos. One was the first moon landing on the moon, July 20th, 1969. It was a magnificent event. Um, if you want to start a conversation, ask anybody old <laughs> where they were at that moment, and everyone can tell you. It was uh, a moment that galvanized the whole the whole of world. And then it was Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. And I know, again, that you've probably seen this in history class, but it's worth watching. Our last slide is to give you an idea of where we've been. Um, Apollo 11 went to Mare Tranquilitatis, um, which is right here. Apollo 12 went to Oceanus Procellarum. Uh, which is right here. So every single moon mission was designed to give us new geologic data about our planet. Apollo 13 was the ill-fated one that we brought our astronauts home safely, but they never actually made it to the moon. Apollo 14 was Fra Moro, and Fra Moro um, was Paul, what's it, 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 uh, Apollo 14. There they are. Apollo 15 was the Hadley Apines, which are mountains or hills, and so we sent, the, you can see there's a hilly range right here, and this time they actually sent astronauts to the hills. We wanted to see some different geology. Uh, Apollo 16 was to Descartes, and Descartes is right there, and the Taurus Lithro was Apollo 17 right there, different area on the mare. So that finishes our talk about the moon. We will um, come back next chapter and begin talking about all the other planets.